Hi, I'm Dr. Dan, and, and we're going to talk a little bit about gluten diagnosis today. Like, how do you know that you're gluten sensitive? Now, in some, uh, some offices, they're going to tell you that the only way to know is they run a blood test and look for uh, tissue transcontaminants, antibodies, and something called endomycetal antibodies. And then, if those are positive, they do a, um, an intestinal biopsy to look for actual physical damage, and then they label you celiac. The uh, problem with that is that a lot of people are going to test negative for those, but gluten is going to kill them anyway. So how do you know? Now, I want you to look at O Vitamin Pro, or you can go to silverstatechiropractic.com and look for something that I call gluten quick facts. Now, on the quick facts, you'll see a list of about a hundred different things, different conditions that are related to gluten sensitivity. So what I recommend, you look at that list and go, do I have any of these issues? And the list is quite extensive, so I'm not even going to talk about it. But you look at the list and you go, oh yeah, I've got like five or six of those things. Then you do a genetic test through, um, my favorite right now is Intero Lab. So you do this basic genetic test, and you can get the form on the Old Vitamin Pro as well. And it's option number 11 at this point. This is uh, 2011. And if um, you come back pos with a positive test plus these these issues that are that are rel that are relatively commonly linked to gluten sensitivity, you can assume that you are. Now, if you want more information than that, you can do a a profile. And at this point, there are different labs working on this, but Cyrix Labs, uh, C Y R E X, has this worked out, and they do uh, two main profiles that I'm interested in. And one of them is, is called Array 3, and that tests for 24 different types of proteins or that, again, that tissue transmutaminase and things that um, are related to, uh, to wheat, specifically. Now, the reason they run 24 is that it's possible for you to, to be negative with the tissue transcutaminase or the endomycelial antibodies, but react to one of the other myriad of problems that uh, wheat... Uh, gluten can cause. So they found that you've got to run about 24 of these different things in order to really show that you're negative. So if, if um, you run this panel, everything comes back negative, you're, uh, you, you're not creating any of those antibodies, then maybe you're not gluten sensitive after all. But, but still, the ultimate test is to go off, of, um, go off of gluten, and that means all of it, and eliminate every even trace amounts from your diet and see what happens. Now, if um, you're on a gluten-free diet and you're still having problems, that's what Array 4 is for. And they're going to test for things like oats and corn and potatoes and coffee. Yeah, coffee and chocolate can also stimulate uh, antibody reactions. Not good news for everybody I know, but you know, if you want to be healthy, you'll uh, eliminate whatever whatever's killing you. So anyway, that's a basic overview of how you decide if you're gluten sensitive. And that's a lot different than what you're going to find in um, celiac.com or uh, living, uh, living with or gluten free living magazine, that kind of thing. But these, you know, the information they give you is about 10 years too old. I was talking to a lady the other day who, um, you know, basically put, you know, put herself on a gluten free diet, which is what most people do, and because she had lesions in her brain. And when they, um, she would do this gluten free diet, they retested her uh, some months later and they were all gone. And of course, the doctor didn't put two and two together, but the patient certainly knew what happened. So, it's not always about your intestines. There are other factors involved. So, that's a basic overview of, of uh, how you can decide if you're gluten sensitive or not.